What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy, Skinny Kenny, a.k.a. the Bronze Star Vet. Hey, um, uh, me and my dad went out to do some crappie fishing yesterday on Lake Houston. We caught some slabs. I was such in a rush and so such a, so excited for him coming from Mississippi. Him and my sister and my nephew came down from Mississippi um, Friday and we hung out. You know, went to the mall, carnival, went out to eat, had a good time. Uh, but me and my dad, we went out to Lake Houston Saturday, yesterday. I was so excited that I left my camera. We caught some humongous slaps. Uh, if you're on my Facebook or my Instagram, you've probably seen some of the photos or some of the pictures of some of those nice crop that we caught yesterday. But this video today is going to be, oh yeah, uh, I, the person who won the um, shirt still haven't responded. So what I'm going to do is I want everybody or whoever wants to have a chance to win, pick a number between 1 and 25. Tomorrow we're going to do a random count. Uh, well, not tomorrow, Friday. Friday, I'm going to use my random counter on my phone, the app, and whoever is closest to the number or have the number right between 1 and 25, um, they'll just get the shirt. Uh, whoever picks the number first, uh, that's who gets it. If y'all pick the same number, whoever picked it first, they'll be the winner of the shirt. So we can go ahead and get that out of the way, and we'll start with our 20 hand tie giveaway. <clears throat> but on this video, I want to show y'all how I do my hand ties. Everybody do hand ties different. Everybody tie them different. This is the easiest way for me and a successful way for me. Uh, my hand ties, hey, they work. I've caught several fish on them. Some of my friends got some of my hand ties. They caught several fish. Sent my dad some. He used them back in Mississippi. They work. So I'm sure they work. Uh, this is the way I hand tie mine. Most of all my jigs, what I do, I use bucktail. I have every color. Uh, this morning, I've been tying since about 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning. It is 5 o'clock now. So, I've been tying all day, trying to fill some orders. So, I've been hand tying some shark tails and some black tails. I got two types of jigs I'm going to show y'all that I'm making. I'm Actually, I got like three or four different types that I make. But my main type I make is with the buck tails. I have every color buck tail that Bass Pro has. I have every color buck tail. So, green. I mean, I have shark, black, orange, brown, pink, purple, blue, Red, white, yellow, pink. Do I got purple? I don't think I got purple. Yep, and I have purple. So that's every color that um Bass Pro has to offer. My Chanel, y'all know I'm a budget guy. Like I told you, I'm a budget crappie fisherman because I love to do it and I try to find the best price for it. My Chanel, I order all my Chanel. Off of eBay. Uh, it comes from Nimrod's Tackle. Nimrod's Tackle. I got it off of eBay from Nimrod's Tackle. I think they're like one ninety. Some of them are one ninety nine a pack. Some are two ninety nine a pack. Great deal. A great Nimrod Tackle is a great place to order your Chanel from or your your, your jig tying stuff from. They great price. Shipped it quick. Got it quick. No problem. Perfect. 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 So um, Nimrod's Tackle. I don't know if y'all can see it, but this is how it's spelled. Nimrod's Tackle. That's why I got it from. Uh, so today, I'm just going to show you how I do my hand ties. We're going to do a... Uh, let's do a chartreuse. These are my jig heads, too. Jig, um, when I started doing my hand ties, I realized hand tying is actually quicker than powder paint. Powder paint takes a long time because I like to do my eyes and all of that, so... So this is, we're going to do a short head, short truth head. This vice, I got this vice from uh, Bass Pro. I got the vice from Bass Pro for like 40 or 50 bucks. Then I have the stand for it. The stand is pretty heavy too. I think the stand was like 10 or 15 bucks so that I won't have to, you know, clamp it on the table or whatever. Um, and I can move it around if I want to move it around somewhere. If I want to take it out of town and do some hand ties, I can just do that. But um, let's get this hand tying thing started. What I like to do, I want I like to put it in my vise, then I like to press on the head. You try to press on the head, nothing else moves, but this little shaft, that's how you know you got it tight. So you always want to start with your base. Uh, whatever, most of the time when I do my base, I do my base with whatever color Chanel I'm using. So we're gonna do what color we wanna do? We're gonna do a short head. Uh we're gonna do a black body and a pink tail. How about that? So I need to get out some pink buck tail. Got some pink right here. So we're gonna pull out some pink. What I like to do, I like to get 
get the hair and I pinch off. Like just pinch off how much you think you need. I've got it like down to a science how much buck tail I need. So I pinch off, pinch it off, and I like to separate it so you don't cut the rest of it. You separate it, pull up the part you're gonna cut. Got my little jig time scissors. Separate it, cut it at the bottom, boom, we're ready to go. Then I like to try to keep it in line because I've dropped it sometimes and have to line it back up. So you try to keep it in line or like that. What I, with my, I'm going so fast. What I did wrong was I didn't make my base first. So we're going to do my base right quick. So I'm doing a black body. So I'm using black thread. My thread. Got my thread off of eBay. Uh, all different type of colors. See a couple of them missing. I got them on some of my spools already. Um, but I got this for like $7 on eBay. I was told by SK, he gave me the best advice. When I first started, I was using some of the uh, hand time floss. The hand time floss break all the time. I mean, every time I would break some, break some, break some, break some. He was like, man, use regular sewing thread. It's better. It's stronger and it's better. So, now I'm sure I'll probably break because I like to pull my tight. I might break it just because I'm shooting a video. If I wasn't shooting a video, it probably wouldn't break. But this is just regular sewing thread. You want to make your base. So, you see how I did? I pulled some out, and I just tie mine up. This is kind of, this spool thing that's holding, I don't know what's the name of this holding the thread. It's kind of tight. So, I don't like to slide it down. I just like to release it like that. So, I like to just tie it down first, then I come back and I fill it in. Fill in every little gap. Okay, got the gap filled in. Get your tag in, snap, cut the snap, the, the tag in off. This is when you're supposed to cut your duck, your buck tail, but I did it early. So, but it's still in line. So I got it in line. You want to line it up? Get yourself some thread, and I like to line mine up. I like to line it up right there at the base of the head. I don't want to put it over the head. What you want to do? You want to go ahead and. Tighten that down at the front because if you just go straight to the back, it's going to be bushed out up here. And then you have to try to fill it in while it's bushed out. But if you start at the front and start locking it down, then you can just move your way to the back. See how I just left spaces in it? And we're going to come back and fill that in because we don't want it too tight because we're going to have to move it. So then you want to move it and want to put it right on top of that, the shaft of the hook. Okay, I got it where I want to have it. Now we can just fill it on in. Make sure it's tight. And like I said, this is how I do mine. Everybody do theirs different. Everybody do it different. I ain't gonna say it's a right or a wrong way to do it. This is the way I I do it, and it works great for me. It's pretty successful for me. So this is the way I do it. Okay, we got it good to go. Then I like to look at my tail. You can judge how long you want your tail. I like my tail like medium. So what I do, I don't like to hold it straight and cut it because it's all be flat in the line. I like mine to kind of be you no know, different sizes. So I freehand cut it. So I freehand cut it. That looks pretty good. Then I like to get my my um flash. Now, this is some flash I bought off of eBay. I got like seven or eight different colors for like $3, which Chanel costs a little bit, like four or five bucks at, at uh, Bass Pro. But I order eBay. Like I said, I'm an eBay person. Sometimes on eBay, I get it from China, and it takes a little bit longer, like maybe three weeks to a month. But, hey, that's, I like I said, I'm a budget guy. So what I do, I, and I like, I love flash. So I get two strands of flash, and I... Find a halfway point. You find a halfway point, and I stop it right there at the halfway point, and I cut it. This is the most important part to me when it comes to flash. So I line all four of them. Now I got four pieces. There's gonna be four on each side once I fold it. It be so it be eight pieces all together. What I like to do is put my sh my uh, flash in front of my thread instead of behind it. Cause if you put it behind, you start tying it'll move back. But if you put it in front of your thread. And you slide it back with the thread. 
Then I try to line them up together so they'll be the same, by around the same size. That's good to go. So we do it like that. Make a couple of turns on it. Then we'll lay it down so we can try to get the flash on both sides. Be kind of even. Then we'll lock it down. Bring that back to the front. You look at look at it, look at it. So I like to cut my flash about an eighth of an inch longer than my tail. So I get it together like that. Boom. I think that looks pretty good. And we're gonna go with the black body. Uh, okay, so here goes some of my Chanel. This actually this Chanel is kind of black with like some green flash inside the Chanel, so it's kind of cool. So like I like I like to do my Chanel, I bring it up to the head, right to the top of the jig head. See, now I want to act crazy. See, it didn't even go to the top just because I'm shooting this video, but that's fine too. We'll start it back in the middle. We'll lock it down. Like I said, I like bucktails to me. It's easy to tie to me. Some people, you know, I see a lot of people like Hackle. Hackle is a beautiful, it makes a beautiful jig, a beautiful jig. Um, the, the Hackle, the feathers. Uh, you know, everybody got different types. Some people do rabbit fur, different types. Bucktails has worked great for me, so I'm, I'm going to do bucktails. I love bucktail. Uh, like saying, it's easier to me. So we're going to wrap. You see, I'm wrapping, I'm pulling it tight. And while I'm wrapping it, you want to look at it to make sure it's full. Because sometimes it'll be a low spot, then I'll go back and re-wrap it. Sometimes double wrap that if it's not exactly how I want it. So then, when I get to the end, I want to hold that jig and pull it tight. So, now this is how I finish my uh, jig. Because I, when I first started, I made a few mistakes. And I figured out a way that I can do mine. So whenever my last pass on my Chanel is, I wrap my thread right there at the half, at half, right in the middle of that last pass of Chanel. I wrap it three times. One, two, and three. Then what I do, I pull them both tight together. Because what I used to do is bring it, bring my thread too far forward. And then once I wrap it, it'll pop out. The Chanel will pop out. Then you'll have the Chanel sticking up. But when I figured out if you wrap that thread, you wrap that thread right there. In the middle of your last pass of Chanel, you'll be good to go. So we got that three whip finish. Took me a while to uh, get it down packed, but it's simple now that I know how to do it. This is how I do mine. I'm left-handed, so I, sometimes I do stuff backwards. But this is how I do mine. I pull up. You see, this is your whip finisher. You see it? So this little hook part right here on the front, I pull up on the thread. Then you got the back part. They got the little hump. I put it back like that. So now you're gonna make a triangle. So what I do, I come around one time and then I spin it and it locks in. Now with my whip finish, I tuck it behind, I tuck it behind my um Chanel. So it'll be kind of underneath my Chanel, it's like squeezed underneath my Chanel and my jig head so it won't be seen. I do four to five times spin, push down on it so the back part is released. Then I pull back on the thread. And the only thing that's left is the little hook part on the front. Pull back. Pull out. Tug. Make sure it's tight. Get the thread. Snap. I like to turn it upside down. Uh, This is a flathead cement I get from Bass Pro. It's kind of expensive. To me, it's expensive. I don't know how much the glue's supposed to cost. But I think it's like 10 or 12 bucks. But it works easier. I have this also hard as whole head cement. I don't like it though because it has like a fingernail polish brush on it and it's kind of messy to me. So I don't like to use that. I like this one because you have the little small little point and you're good to go with that. So put that right on a knot. You're good to go. Bam. And what y'all think about that G? You think a crappy will hit it? Hope so. I think a crappy will hit it. This is a new a new type of jig that I'm gonna use. I want to show y'all some other stuff. I have some rubber tail rubber tail rubber tail jigs that I've been doing, and I've used those a couple of times and it works pretty good. 
Uh, this is one of them right here. See how the rubber tail is? Got a little flash. Sharp head. Little rubber tails. So I like that one. Then I have some bigger rubber tails that I do with a little flash. It's kind of cool. Uh, but I'm going to show you all I got some. I do a twin tail now. I do a twin tail with these big, big squiggly tails. I ordered these off of eBay. Came from China. It took. I only ordered one color because I didn't know what size it was going to be. Uh, Cause you know how you can order stuff online and you want a certain size and it be either too big or too small. This is the perfect size, exactly the size I wanted. So, like a week ago, I ordered every color that they had. I think they had like 11 different colors. I ordered all of them. So, it's probably going to be by the end of March or early April before I get it because it's coming from China. So, uh, yeah, these are all the colors. So, uh, we're going to do... So, I only have pink right now. So, let's do... We're going to do a blue and pink. So, like I say, I like to turn my jig head upside down like i said because i'm left-handed turn it upside down lock it down boom 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 time we try to do this fast what color body we should do we got a blue head pink tail let's do a sharp body so we'll do a sharp body build our base get our thread pull it and then we'll make our base And you want to make, you want to, I like to stop my uh, base right there at the edge, where the, where the edge of the shaft where it starts slants down, because it lines up right with the tip of the hook. And that's why I like to stop, stop my uh, base at. We're going to come back in and fill it in now. Okay. So now we want to do, we want to cut our tag in off. And we're gonna get our rubber tail. Get one strand of rubber tail. Cut that off, get that out the way. Like I say, I do the same way. I like to get it in front of the thread instead of behind the thread, especially with these rubber tails. If you put it behind the thread and you start going, it's really a slide back on you. Then you're trying to get it locked in. But if you put it in front of that thread, this is how I do all my rubber tails, the small ones and these big ones. This is actually the big rubber tail that's gonna be a twin. Uh, twin tail hand tie pull up on it I make one pass in the front with these rubber tails I make one pass in the back so we'll lock it in and then we'll lay it down and we'll spin it lock it in loosely so then I let it go and I try to size them up so you have one on each side now we'll lock it all the way in All right, we locked that in. We got the pink tails. So let's go with pink tails. We'll do some sharp flash. We might do some pink flash. We'll do pink flash. My other one, my last one was. Oh, my last one was, was my last one pink flash? I can't even remember what last color. No, the last one was green flash. So we'll do some pink flash. Get two strands. Get two strands, line them up. Line them up. Cut them in half. Make sure they're still lined up. Put it in front of the thread. Now we'll try to even, even them up together. We'll lock it down. to get get that flash lined up so i want to look at my tail because i don't want my tail to be that long so what i do i get my flash out the way i should have cut my tails first but i get my flash out the way you don't want to pull your rubber tails because you're not going to get an accurate cut you might you might cut them too short so i just kind of let them lay over my finger and i cut the tail kind of pinch it where i want it to be right there I almost cut my finger off. So that's as long as I want my tails. Then I lay, the, I lay my tail back across my finger with my flash. And I, like I said, I like my flash to be about an eighth of an inch longer 
and my tails. So we good to go with that. And what color I said we we're gonna do Chanel. I mean, we're gonna do chartreuse Chanel. Put it up to the top of the head, not over the head, not on the head, but right behind it. We're going to just make one pass, the first pass, just to put it in there. Then we're going to lock it down. Then we go. We're going to wrap it. While we're wrapping it, we're looking to make sure it all stays the same size. And if it don't, then I'll double wrap it. Pull it tight, double wrap it to fill it in. Then I like to grab the body and tug, tug down on the chenille. Do three wraps in the middle of my last pass. One, two, three. Pull both of them tight. Cut the chenille. Get my whip finisher out. Hook, hook that up. Then wrap that behind the, the loop. And we're going to go one time around. Then they're going to make a triangle. And like I said, all of this is going behind behind the uh, Chanel, so it's getting wedged in behind the Chanel and the jig here, so it won't be seen. Four or five times around, maybe six, I don't know how many times I did it. Cut it, boom. Flip it upside down. Glue on the knot. Put that back in, look at it. Sometimes it be a little fuzzy. So you want to trim it up a little bit, you no know, making a little haircut. Give it a little haircut. Now, we are done. Do y'all think a crappie will like this? They're going in there. I mean, I could have made the tails longer, but I don't really need them that long. You think a crappie will like that? I think a crappie will go crazy over that. But I just wanted to show y'all how I make my hand ties. Uh, I had a couple people ask me how I make my hand ties. That is how I make my hand ties. I'm sorry this video took 2 minutes and 22 seconds. But I wanted to go kind of in depth. I wanted y'all to make sure y'all seen every step I did. I'm not trying to hide anything. But um, I really thank y'all for watching. I really hate that I left my camera yesterday. Because I wanted to uh, show that video of me and my dad. Uh, catching those big slab crappie. He's not a vertical fisherman. He loves to uh, fish with, the, with a bobber. Uh, jig and bobber and uh, he vertical fish he felt that first thump he felt he was just like oh my god and he got addicted to that thump yeah, that, that thump is really addictive so we had a great time on Lake Houston caught some nice slabs caught about 16 yesterday a couple of them was I think we had like three or four that were like 1.9 something so I mean we had some nice ones yesterday uh, you can tell they really getting ready to spun my dad he did something that he taught me when we was little you was getting a little jumbo boat with a paddle we used to uh, fish for brim. Back at home, we call them brim. Bluegills and stuff like that. We uh, fish for them. And when they bedding up, he was like, oh, you can smell them. I can smell them over there. So like he was like, go over there. I can smell them. I can smell them. And we went over there, and that's what we sat like the whole day. And we caught all of them. It was crazy how he said he can smell them when they spun. You actually can smell them like where they bed up at. It's crazy. Uh, but we had a great time yesterday. Uh, hopefully, uh, I get a new crappie fishing video out soon. But make sure y'all pick a number between one and 25 and whoever get the closest to the number who the first one to pick it they're going to win the shirt then after that we're going to get ready to do our 20 tie hand giveaway 20 hand tie giveaway um i'm not making this video like to make any sales or anything this is what i like to do i love to do anything that had to do with crappie fishing if y'all do want to purchase some y'all can purchase some crappie jigs hand tie jigs that i do or let me know whatever kind of color you want or whatever like that and we can we can, we can do some uh send me an email or you can check out my Instagram, or hit me up on Facebook, or whatever, and uh, hook y'all up with some of these hand ties. I mean, if you don't, that's fine. Like I said, I'm not on here trying to make a sale. I actually work for a living, so this is just something I like to do in my spare time as a hobby. I like to hand tie. Like, it's so addictive to hand tie. But uh, I really appreciate all my subscribers, man. I, I really appreciate y'all just for, you know, just for taking the time out of y'all life to look at my video, and I really do appreciate it. I'm very humbled by it, like, I really am, like, I really appreciate it. Uh, I can't stress it enough, like, if I had the time, and I had the the, the uh, manpower, had some more people making hand ties with me, I promise you, I would send all y'all hand ties, but I just, I don't have the time, uh, and I've been working out of town for the last three weeks, only coming home on the weekend, I gotta go back out of town tomorrow for two weeks, 
So I don't even think I'll be back at home next weekend because I got to work over the weekend, next weekend out of town. So I won't even be at home, won't be able to go to fishing or nothing for the next two weeks. So I'm really going to have to itch. I might have to take, when I get back, I might have to take a couple of days off during the week, middle of the week, and do me some crappie fishing because I'm sure I'm going to have the itch pretty bad, the crappie fishing itch. But I really appreciate y'all watching my videos, man. Like I said, if y'all ever see me on the lake anywhere, hey, man, uh, holler at me. I might throw y'all a couple hand ties, man. Like, man, try this color, man. They, they hitting it pretty good, you know. Anything, I'm not, I'm a very approachable person. Like, I'm a people's person anyway. Like, people are like, why well, you just go talk to anybody. Like, I'm just a people's person. I love everybody, man. No matter what, you know, that's just who I am. That's how I was raised, born and raised like that. Uh, so, appreciate my parents for raising me like that. But, yeah, man, I appreciate all my subscribers, man. Uh, like I said, hopefully we get a video out soon. I'll get a video out soon. Uh, when I get back on the lake, uh, I guess in two weeks, hopefully. But I appreciate, like I said, I can't say it, I can't say this enough. I really appreciate my subscribers. I appreciate y'all. Truly, I really do. Um, I got to get back to doing some hand ties. Like I said, I've been going since about 7, 7 30 this morning. I had to stop and shoot this video because I wanted to show y'all how I did my hand ties. And I want to also try to get somebody to win this crappy shirt so we can go on to the next giveaway, which is the 20 hand ties. So, um, man, y'all have a blessed Sunday, man. A blessed Sunday. Have a blessed week, man. I hope y'all have a blessed, very great, blessed week. And uh, until next time, it's your boy, Skinny Kenny, a.k.a. the Bronze Star Vet. I'm out.